Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. It's so nice to see you. I'm so glad that we're all able to join together and worship this morning. This is a this is a, a wonderful worship service that we have been gifted with uh, from the United Church of Canada East. So that is uh, the three regions have come together that form the United Church of Canada in the Atlantic region, so uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and PEI and Bermuda and Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, all have come together as the United Church of Canada East and prepared this service of lessons and carols for us today. So I am so pleased to be able to join with you in worship as we uh, as we listen to the music and the scripture and, uh, and our Christmas journey continues. So yes, today is the third day of Christmas, the third day of Christmas, my true love gave me three French hens, so whatever. I don't know what you're gonna do with that, but just putting it out there. Um, uh, I Just a few quick announcements before we get to our service. So um, next Sunday, January 3rd, we do have uh, in-person worship in the sanctuary in addition to our online worship, which will continue here. And so that will be happening next Sunday, January 3rd at 11 a.m. And then on January 10th, uh, Erica wanted me to remind you, Sunday School, hi Sunday School, that Sunday School will be resuming downstairs uh, at 11 a.m. And on January 10th, we're also having communion. So to keep that in mind for, for those of you that'll be worshiping upstairs and at home. And so if you're worshiping at home and you'd like to have the elements for communion, we will have them available uh, in here in the sanctuary on January 3rd, they'll be available with the quilters on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week. And then they will be going out to folks who receive bulletins on Thursday, as well as um, they'll be here with us at the office and on Thursday of that week. So I don't know the date, but just the week between the third and the 10th communion elements will be available for those who want to worship at home with them. And if you don't get a chance to get the little communion element set, feel free to worship with whatever elements you have at home on the 10th with us. And then also on the 10th, we're having a session meeting at two o'clock and a stewards meeting at 630. It's back into January and back into meetings and all of that. And then looking really far ahead, the official board meeting will be on the 17th of January, which reminds me that Wilma would like you to know to please get in your reports. All of those committees and groups who have reports for our annual uh, book, <laughs> I can't think of the name of it right now, but you know what I mean. Uh, if they could, uh, if they could send those uh, reports in, that would be great. So I think that's everything I had to remember today. I haven't heard of anything different yet in my ears, so I'm going to go with it. Um, I am looking forward to worshiping with you today and I'm going to check back in at the end and see how we all enjoyed it. So take care and uh, let us now join together in worship. Wherever we are in North America, Turtle Island, we're on lands that have been walked upon, loved and cared for by indigenous peoples. Who are the peoples where you live and work and play and pray? Here where I am, it is called Mi'kma'ki. We do this reminder of acknowledging the land is a reminder to us that we have work to do as church, as citizens, to reconcile the harms that have been done, the relationships that have been broken. So let's be called once again to commit ourselves to continuing to build peace and friendship in all that we do. Welcome to our Christmas service of Lessons and Carols. My name is Roger Janes, and I am your Stewardship and Gifts Officer. It is my pleasure on behalf of all of the staff and all of the elected leaders of the region to wish you a Merry Christmas and to extend to you and yours 
very best wishes for a happy and a healthy 2021. It's hard to be a child in Gaza, but in the midst of this harsh life, there are places that offer gentle support for children and parents. This clinic is one of three operated by the Middle East Council of Churches in Gaza. It monitors the health of 22,000 children annually, as well as providing pre- and postnatal care for mothers, dentistry services, and a range of psychosocial support for children. Children are measured and weighed at each visit. When they are sick, the clinic can supply medications that they need from the stock available. And for 38% of the children, iron supplements to treat their chronic anemia caused by the lack of affordable, nutritious food. Gaza is a war zone, under blockade and locked in by Egypt and Israel in a cycle of attack and counterattack in the ongoing conflict rooted in the wider occupation of the Palestinian territories. Here, civilians are always in the line of fire. But there are small respites in a building beside the clinic, there is a satellite program where these girls meet, dance, have fun, and remember how to laugh together. The work of the clinic and the Middle East Council of Churches' other programs in Gaza are vital to people's mental and physical health. Thank you for your gifts, and please continue to support the mission and service of the United Church of Canada. Please join with me in the call to worship. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward all. For out of God's own being, Christ has come to bring light and love to all people. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. We come to gather our tears and laughter, our work and our play, into God's loving embrace. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and goodwill toward all.
us pray. Wondrous God, we thank you for revealing your glory to us through unlikely people in unexpected places. Surround us as we worship in many different places and as we remember your incarnate love born to a woman from a forgotten corner of the world. Let the holy mystery that surrounds Jesus' birth surprise us with joy and strengthen us to go out into the world with your light that hope peace and love might shine forth from us to your honor and glory and praise. Amen. Stable born baby, a gift from God, of God, vulnerable and small, yet savior of all. We often forget you lost in our pandemic anxiety, our fear that is too often violently overpowering Fill us with your spirit, so we will recognize the spark of hope in one another and in the world around us. Salvador, Savur, Savior of all. In you, salvation is made known. It's a gift we cannot forget, as talk of lockdown and caseloads and social distancing dominate our thoughts. Fill us with your spirit so we will recognize your holy peace in one another and in the world around us. Divine giver of light, your star shines in the night sky, showing us the way to you. Yet we are quick to block out this light with colors of our own making. Open our hearts and give us the means to joyfully shine beyond this community and into the world. Mysterious one, you reveal the inner thoughts of all who draw near to you. Soft as not, we work to keep you at arm's length, afraid you will transform our hearts and fill them with love. Draw us near and comfort us with your eternal love as we learn to live as children of that love. The gift of Jesus Christ, the ultimate gift of God's love, burns within the heart of all gathered communities. Through this gift, we come to know hope, joy, peace, and love that transcends our present struggles. May we open this gift among us and shine with the love of God in this community and into this world.
from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. We will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The story of Still, Still, Still. The melody for Still, Still, Still is a traditional folk tune from the Austrian state of Salzburg. The carol appeared for the very first time in 1865 in a folk song collection by Marie Wenzes Zeus, founder of the Salzburg Museum. The words, which run between four and six verses in German, describes the peace of the infant Jesus and his mother as the baby is sung asleep. The modern standard German version is attributed to Georg Gosch in 1895 to 1956. There are various English traditions of still, still, still. The version that we sing in our church is translated by John Rutter in 1994. Psalm 34, verses 1 to 10. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The younger lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Next to Isaac Watts and Charles Wesley, no writer has made a greater contribution to English hymnody than James Montgomery. Montgomery's parents were Moravian missionaries in the West Indies. 
While attending Moravian Seminary, James learned of their deaths and for a period lived in aimless discouragement. He took up editing for a newspaper called Sheffield Register in London, where he became known for his poetry. Angels from the Realms of Glory first appeared as a poem in his newspaper on December 24, 1816. Many students of hymnody have acclaimed this as one of our finest Advent and Christmas carols. Let us pray. God of gifts, God of grace, bless our ears and our hearts this day, that as we sing these carols, hearing both stories of scripture and inspiration, we might find both comfort and challenge within them. May we be inspired to sing with gusto, telling the story of scripture through our actions with reckless abandon, so that the world might be touched by your love. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, we offer this prayer. Amen. Have you ever wondered what Christmas was like for the animals that gathered around Jesus? I know I have, and one of my very favorite stories is called Room for a Little One by Martin Waddell. And so I'm going to share this story with you now. It was a cold winter's night. Kind ox lay in his stable close to the side of the inn. Old dog came by. He stopped and looked into the stable. I need somewhere to rest, said old dog. Come inside, kind ox said. There's always room for a little one here. Old dog came in and lay down in the straw. He nestled close to kind ox, sharing the warmth of his stable. Stray cat peered in. She saw old dog and she stopped. Stray Cat arched her back and her fur bristled. I'll not chase you, said Old Dog. Come inside, Kind Ox said. There's always room for a little one here. Stray Cat came into the stable. She curled up in the straw close to the friends she had found, purring and twitching her tail.
small mouse stopped at the door of the stable. She saw a stray cat and she quivered with fear. You're safe here. I won't harm you, said stray cat. Come inside, kind ox said. There's always room for a little one here. Small mouse scurried in. She nestled down warm in the straw in the peace of the stable. Then tired donkey came. Joseph led him along. Mary rode on tired donkey's back. Joseph was cold and Mary was weary, but there was no room at the inn. Where will my baby be born? Mary asked. Come inside, kind ox called to tired donkey. There's always room for a little one here. Tired donkey brought Mary into the stable. Joseph made her a warm bed in the straw to save her from the cold of the night. And so Jesus was born with the animals around him. Kind ox, old dog, stray cat, small mouse, and tired donkey. All welcomed him to the warmth of their stable. That cold winter's night beneath the star's light, a little one came for the world. And so we remember that Jesus creates space for us. There is always room for us in the stable to welcome Jesus, and there is always room for each one of us to share that love with the world. So thank you for sharing in story time with me. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. The Good News According to Luke in chapter 2, the first 20 verses. The Birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of God stood before them, and the glory of God shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which has been made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, 
and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the good news. Thanks be. This carol, Jesus Our Brother, Voices United 56, originally hails from a 12th century Latin song, Orentus Partibus, which first appeared in France and is usually attributed to Pierre de Corbiel, Bishop of Sens. The tune is said to have been part of the Fete de l'Anne, the Donkey's Festival, which celebrated the flight of the Holy Family into Egypt and was a regular Christmas observance in Beauvais and Sens, France in the 13th century. During the Mass, it was common for a donkey to be led or ridden into the church. The words and tune were designed to give thanks for the donkey on which Mary rode and began, Orentus Partibus, Adventavi Asinus, or From the East the Ass Has Come. Each verse was sung and finished with the chorus, Hail, Sir Donkey, Hail. It was a solemn affair, but the tune became very popular in 17th and 18th century Germany. The song immigrated to England in the 12th century, where it began to take on its modern character. It is for this reason that some sources will give the origin of this song as England. Friends, God so loved the world that God gave us the only begotten child so that we might have a life that is abundant, so that we would know that no matter what, we are not alone, that God is with us. As we have been truly blessed 
we have an opportunity this Christmas season to bless others near and far by sharing our love and our financial gifts. Please share as you are able. Let us pray. Gifted by your grace, we offer you what we have been given, O God, and pray that these gifts may be used for the sharing of love, the doing of justice, and the giving of peace. Amen. Good morning, folks. My name is Kendall Harrison. I am the regional minister related to pastoral relations. It is good to be with you. The words I'm going to share with you now come from the book of Revelation, dated to 95 AD. The author is John, although uniquely and interestingly enough, we're not really sure which John. There uh, has been debate for now centuries. And, uh, and it's still a question that people like to debate. It is a book of manifestation. Some churches like to take the book as literal fact, as future events. But I think doing so, you lose some of the power of the words and, uh, and the imagery that is to be an assurance of God's uh, power and God's presence with us. And so from the end of the book of Revelation, I'm going to share with you words from the 21st chapter. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the former heaven and earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, coming down from our God, made ready as partners are made ready for marriage. And I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, God's dwelling is here with all humankind, that God will dwell with God's people, that God will be with them and present as their God, that God will wipe away tears from every eye and death will be no more. There will be no mourning no crying or pain anymore. The former things have passed away. And then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. And continued, Write this down, 
for these words are trustworthy and true. And then said to me, all is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will always give freely the water of new life from my life-giving spring. I'd like to tell you this story of the hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. During the bitter days of slavery, black slaves on American plantations solaced themselves with song and created a unique form of American hymnology, the Negro Spiritual. One of these that was found and published became a well-known Christmas carol, Go Tell It on the Mountain. John Wesley Work Jr. was born in Nashville in 1871. Growing up around music, due mostly to his dad being a choir master, he learned to not only appreciate, but to preserve and perform the Negro spiritual. Many of the words to this particular spiritual were somewhat unknown due to the passing of the spiritual from plantation to plantation and from generation to generation. But the chorus, go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born, was crystal clear. Intrigued by this, John wrote two new stanzas for the songs. To black slaves, the birth of a liberating savior was a message to be heralded from the highest mountains, and it still is for us all. In the name of Jesus, we give thanks for the light who came as light for the world. We join in prayer for all the faithful who seek the light in true community on earth. God, in your love, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we give thanks for the light of justice born a Jew in the Roman Empire. We pray for all who are persecuted 
who suffer for reasons of gender or race, for reasons of faith or politics. God, in your love, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we give thanks for the light of hope who was born in a stable. We pray for those who are in need of any kind, be it need of shelter, need of food, need of meaningful work, need of caring. God, in your love, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus, who give thanks for the light of compassion, for whom there was no safe place. We pray for all of the fearful, all of the bereaved, all of the sick, and for all who are in pain or in special need. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Light of our souls, call us onward into your light as this new year begins. Let this be the year of the coming of your dream, your kingdom here on earth, as we share the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Good morning, folks. It's Kendall Harrison. I'm your regional minister working in the area of pastor relations. And I'm going to share with you the words from Paul's letter to Titus, the second chapter. It's a letter written to Titus in order to be an encouragement for his ministry. He was a disciple of Paul's and asked to work in at this point uh, on the island of Crete to grow the early church. And so we read these words. And that is the way that we should live because God's grace has come for all of God's people. A grace for everyone. A grace that educates us to live sensible, ethical, and godly lives by rejecting all of that we know to be inappropriate. And at the same time, we wait for a further manifestation of God's grace, much like we have seen in the appearance of Jesus Christ, a gift given to us as an example to, to rescue us from every kind of lawless behavior and to grow a people who are eager to do good for the world. The story of O Little Town of Bethlehem. The minister of Holy Trinity, Philip Brooks, was born in Boston in 1825 and educated at Harvard. He was a beloved and, and respected evangelist. After serving in several Episcopal churches in Philadelphia and Boston, he was appointed the bishop of that area. This giant of a man sto stood six feet, eight inches tall, and he also had a heart that big, and it endeared him to all of the young and the old alike. There were toys always in his office for the many children who would visit him. It was a very familiar sight to see the beloved bishop sitting on the floor and playing games with groups of children. He visited Bethlehem in December of 1865 while traveling to the Holy Lands. His journey included a horseback ride from Jerusalem to Bethlehem on Christmas Eve. By nightfall, he was in the field, where, according to tradition, the shepherds heard the angelic announcement. Then he attended the Christmas Eve service at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. Something about the beauty and simplicity of that visit stayed with Philip Brooks when he returned to America. Several years later, 
when he wanted to have a new song of Christmas for children to sing in his church, he reached back into his memory from that time when he visited the Holy Lands. The poem that he painted in the words and sights and sounds of that little town of Bethlehem that he visited is a song which we sing. Writing to the children of his congregation, he recalled the first visit. I remember especially on Christmas Eve when I was standing in the old church in Bethlehem, close to the spot of where Jesus was born, when the whole church was ringing hour after hour with the splendor of hymns of praise to God. How again and again it seemed as if I could hear the voices of all I knew, telling each other of the wonderful night of the Savior's birth. Every day of the week ahead is a Christmas day, a day in which Christ is and will be, a moment into which the Holy One has come, and a moment which anticipates the reign of peace. Let us then live as a Christmas people. Let us be a people filled with God here and now, compassionate, loving, justice-seeking friends of Jesus, let us also be a people with a light in our window, awake and ready for the Messiah's return.
Oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? Oh, I just, I love, I loved all that music. It was so beautiful and so well done and the stories and the lessons and the prayers. It was, uh, it was wonderful. And I'm so thankful to everyone that, that came together to prepare that for our special service here today. And uh, I'm so thankful that we were all able to join together and worship. Uh, wishing you all the best uh, in the days ahead. And as your Christmas celebrations continue, please take care. Uh, know that I'm thinking of you and holding you in prayer. And, uh, and may you go now with the, the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. See ya. Bye.